Well, it was a little bit too warm in the cockpit today, so I decided to come in the cabin where I have these nice USB fans. Uh, hi, I'm Alan Stokel, and in this episode of Budget Boat Cruising, we do a brief overview of cruising Georgian Bay and the fabulous but little known North Channel. Well, still a bit hot in here with my hat on, so I'll take it off. The North Channel is that uh, bit of Canadian waters between Lake Superior and Lake Huron that is north of Manitoulin Island. It is world renowned as a great cruising destination and thanks to the Great Lakes and the Trent Severn Canal System, it is accessible from almost anywhere in the world. A word of warning here though, it's pretty much impossible to cruise the North Channel or the northern part of Georgian Bay without anchoring. I'm hoping to have my first video on anchoring out real soon, so when it, I post it, I'll link it somewhere here. As I was saying, the North Channel is a great place to cruise, so expect the docks and anchorages to be busy from, say, late June to mid-August. This is not an area to attend if you've never cruised before. A well-equipped vessel will add to the comfort and safety of the crew. If you want to go ashore at one of the anchorages, you will need a dinghy or something similar. We started our cruise from Spanish Ontario. ¿Por qué lo llaman español? Beats me. The town has um, a once-a-day Greyhound bus service along the Trans-Canada Highway to Toronto or Vancouver, but Vancouver is a very long way. Um, and there are also several greasy spoons and a couple of hotels. Uh, a small but okay food store and uh, most importantly an LCBO, Liquor Control Board of Ontario, the liquor store that has beer, spirits and uh, wine. It's a two kilometer walk to town from the marina. There are no taxis. Marina has fuel, pump out, showers, washrooms, and a sauna. I think it's a nod to the large number of Finnish immigrants. Yusimat Netas over Susa Mari. From Spanish, we pass through Little Detroit. You have to hail a Pan Pan on Channel 16 because the passage is narrow and quite long. We anchored for the night at Eagle Island. The bay at Eagle Island is almost deserted. Our next stop was the Benjamin Islands and we came through the narrow channel from the back just to scare everyone. <laughs> There's rocks on both sides, folks. The Benjamins, as usual, was packed with boaters, both seasoned and green. Some spent their days burning fuel. Some just went round and around in their sea dew thingies. Others puttering on their dinghies to water the dogs. And others just left their engines running to keep the air conditioning and freezer working. So we just stayed the night. The next day saw us at Louisa. It's a nice safe anchorage protected from just about anything except perhaps a nasty easterly. The weather started to change so the next night we snugged into Bedford Harbor. The next day it was off to get supplies at Little Current, the unofficial capital of the North Channel. If you go there, don't forget to give the cook a break and head to the Anchor Inn. The LCBO and food store are up the hill. I suggest that you buy the wine and beer and spirits first and have them hold it for you while you go up to the food store a little further up the hill and on the left. 
When you finished, ask the cashier to call Mum's Taxi. It's a flat rate to the dock of eight dollars. And of course the great thing is that they'll stop by the liquor store on the way back and you can pick up the liquor then. I'm not really sure why they call it Little Current because uh, the west to east current can push you right under the swing bridge and it only opens once an hour. Now the next day we pass through uh, Collins Inlet to Nobles Island in the uh, inside channel of the east side of Georgian Bay. It's a uh, well protected anchorage and good protection from the winds from pretty much all directions. The following day we headed down to the Bustard Islands. The only thing I can remem remember is that the stable flies were really, really, really bad and it was too hot to stay covered up so we were a movable feast. If you're not sure what a stable fly is you can check it out at my Grampian Marine website at www.grampianmarine.ca Now Monday we crossed to Point of Barrel where there was the horrible abuse of flags. It started there and it carried on along the whole inland route. Right on the lighthouse, which is federal government property, two flags on a single pole. Now if you're interested in flag etiquette, especially for boaters, visit my Canadian flag website. We call it the Canadian Flag Police. Next, we headed down to Suniga Inlet and a nice but tight anchorage with hidden rocks at the south side of the inlet. As we got further south, we often had to share the spaces with cottagers, but some uh, w welcome anchored boats, but others see them as a nuisance. This anchorage near Monument, for instance, the cottager is openly hostile to boaters and tries to discourage anchoring with boys marked private. Sorry folks, <laughs> you don't own the water. Anyway, next day it was off to Penetanguishene and the end of our trip. I hope you enjoyed this brief overview and uh, that it will encourage you to give cruising a try. In the meantime, please like us and subscribe. If you're up for more, try one of our other videos. For instance, a little easier cruise is cruising around Lake Ontario. Or if you don't have a boat and you'd like to get one, how about how to buy a boat? Or how about if you really don't have any money, how to get a boat for free. Or stop by our sister channel, Grampian Marine, for some do-it-yourself tips. I'm Alan Stokel, and thank you very much for watching.